Okay, I'm rolling here. Okay, so I will go ahead and make sure I'm going to hold the mic. I've discovered that's that's an effective way to do this. Video feed. Hey, yeah. hey, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. How do you like us now? I like that nonsense. Hello, America. Hello. Hello, Hello Americans. <laughs> Welcome to Earth. Paul Harvey. <laughs> Day? That's the story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Boy, that was the end of an era, wasn't it? Oh, man, that was. A loss, was... Of, a loss of Mr. Paul Arunt, yep. which is what his real name was. I think I knew that somewhere down the line as I accumulated uh, <clears throat> stacks of trivia that may work out on a TV show someday. As a conservative commentator, which he was, I've often wondered what he would have to, <laughs> some of the stuff he would have to offer yeah. on the present uh state of things oh i think there would be a lot of words oh i mean okay lots of words we got a uh i gotta make sure i'm on the right pot here as we say pot is a technical term which we use in the industry which is short for a technical term which was <laughs> potentiometer a potentiometer in the audio sense is a volume control so i wanted to make sure that particular channel was on so i could turn it up and start this record that you have brought us speaking of this is one of my favorites right here this has just been a gem in the collection this is the poll winners barney cassell shelly man and ray brown on the bass it's good delightful right there let's listen Shall we? Yeah. like it let's get your soul stirred up so speaking of stirring up your soul i was looking at these crew cuts here on the album yeah okay what what's the year on this have you got a uh, you know the problem with a lot of these albums and i've told you that before is they just don't yeah they don't slap that number on there like they do these days yeah i wish they they would it appears to be a london england pressing yeah uh, yeah, so it might be short of a lot of uh, information, but this would appear to be circa... Late 50s? I would say late 50s or or even early 60s. Yeah. 60s like comes to mind. Yeah. It's a delicious album. So, yeah. the one thing I did want to bring up, I had a very interesting interview the other day um, yes. from uh, with a cat named Sam Bardfeld, and this is his latest CD here. It's the great enthusiasms, great artwork, great cat, just totally, totally a cool cat. And he plays jazz violin, and he's in a very elite group. I love the jazz violin with Regina Carter, and yeah. um, there's all kinds. Of, there, there, there's just not a large contingency of jazz violin. <laughs> you okay? Uh, <laughs> this here. happens every so often. My... Uh, my headphone cord gets wrapped up in the rollers of my chair, and it was getting bad. It was getting bad. It was, a hairy it was situation. Out. This is if you saw me kind of doing this, is because it was getting more wrapped up and pulling my head down. Oh my God, we're almost, all we're all straight here. It almost become uh, dangerous. Okay, I think the cord is free. Yes, so good. Good. So, so this guy Sam, and and, and yeah. this is the story I wanted to bring up. He toured with Bruce Springsteen several times. And he's been on a couple of his albums, and I asked about Bruce. Yeah. And I don't know if you've heard about Bruce Springsteen. Have you heard anything about him playing live? How uh, phenomenal he is? Yeah. Uh, like, as a matter of fact, uh, the, the the albums just don't get it. No. As far as the, like a band, a full piece band is better yeah. in, in you know, live. Well, I guess Bruce is that way, too. He, uh, From what Sam was saying, he takes it to a whole other level. He gets in there, and it's almost a religion for him. He wants the best show that he can possibly put on. I worked with a guy years ago that told me about Bruce. He was kind of a savant, and he stopped me one day, and he just said, have you ever seen Bruce live? I was like, no. He was like, you have to. And I've talked to people, grown men, that have literally, they could they were speechless after they saw him play. Yeah. And he's one of those guys. And I was thinking about it because when U2 came to town, they strike me as a band. I haven't seen them live. Yeah. That would always put on a good show. Yeah. And, no I, heard, what. and I heard it was phenomenal. Yes. And Beck opened up for him. 
Oh, that's right. Yes. And then Beck is one of our uh, real innovators in, yeah. in, in current music. That guy can play anything. Anything. And you know who actually plays with Beck? Jason Faulkner. Oh, really? He was here in town, yeah. He was oh. on stage cranking out that guitar. I didn't know that. Oh, my God. Beautiful. I would have loved to have seen that. Yeah, I would have, too. You know. I had to... You, just, you know, you get, the, you get the notion with people who are in broadcasting or radio that we have the opportunity to see all these people. <laughs> uh, not if you're in the engineering department, which is uh, what I do during my day job. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm lucky to get tickets, <laughs> if they even give them away anymore. It's but an... you can get all the tickets to Yanni yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that you want. Right, right. It's a misconception. Yeah. You know. So what, what else is going on? Well, there was, uh, along that line, there was a, uh, I do meet some interesting people in the hall, I admit, uh, Cheech and Chong. I knew instantly who he was, uh, Cheech Marin and uh, Tommy Chong, uh, (laughs) both of which I just recognized him in the hall, and they were so personable that they just stuck their hands out and shook you, and you just stood there in the hallway leaning against the wall, drinking coffee and talking to them. Nice. Very nice. Just a couple of really laid-back guys. I would imagine so. Uh, The other one that I caught was on uh, a station here we call The Rock, for those of you listening. Um, I I don't pay a lot of attention, frankly, to celebrities when they're there. Right. Because it's kind of my job as an engineer to kind of help out with the technical end of things and and kind of show them around, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I got paged. I was in another office and said, uh, there's an entourage here that is stuck in the basement of the building of the right. studios where I work. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, they had taken the center elevator, which has it's posted there. Yeah. If you get on this elevator and go down and you don't have a key card, you ain't coming back up. Uh-oh. So they got stuck down there, so they dispatched me downstairs. And when I got, when I got downstairs, there was a very... There was a short man and a very tall, hairy individual (laughs) who was uh, not in costume, but uh, big enough that he could have swiped me with one hand. Yeah. And he didn't look like he felt very good, right? frankly. And they were trying to, and I guess he didn't, so they were trying to get him him out to the car and get him on to the next venue, whatever it was going to be. Yeah. And uh, turns out they were trying to leave. They'd just gone out the wrong door. Right. So... I, I don't ask any questions. Yeah. I just say, yeah, man, come on. He's carrying a cane that looks like a Star Wars lightsaber. Yeah. And never occurs to me to ask. Yeah. You know, but I we I should have known who he was when right. I got to the car and it said escape pod on it. The car said it was an escape pod. Right. And, I, and it, it turned out, I asked later, I said, who was that guy? And he said, Peter Mayhew. Chewbacca. Chewbacca. Very nice. I, I ran into and I helped a ailing Chewbacca get to his car. So you were actually the one that, that should have been at the end of Return of the Jedi. You <laughs> saved Chewbacca. <laughs> Cut him out of the escape hatch. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did shake my hand on his way out and went, may the force be with you. Oh, see. I there thought it go. was just some kind of party thing going on for the for the Star Wars convention that was going on in town. No, right. it turned out to be one of the characters. That's beautiful. I love that story. Yeah. But you did have one other story about David Lee Roth. And he had a lot of caffeine in him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Roth uh, visited the radio station, and uh, he was in uh, he was in full character that, boy. That dude's either awake or asleep. That's, That's it. right. He is on on it all the time. He, and I think he would have kissed every girl in the room. <laughs> I'm sure he probably did, but you didn't I see I didn't it. have the heart to tell him he kissed me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, man. And you know what's happened again, don't you? What's that? <laughs> Ah, my God, it's happening again. I'm being... You're being swollen up on a chair. Wait, hold on. It's bad. It's really bad. Here, let me... Oh, there you go. There we go. We're out. Am I out? We have freed Chewbacca again. <laughs> it's happened. Uh, for crying out loud. That's so, what I get for turning a closet into a studio. <laughs> one more thing. I want to give one shout out here. Sure. And I haven't played this song yet, but I got to say, of the latest discs that I've received... This one is one of my favorite titles. I remember, it's going to be backwards. It's, it is backwards, but you'll get the idea. It's Mr. John Diversa, friend of the show, Wobbly Dance Flower. Love and that it. will be featured next week. It's a great listen. Uh, Micah, how are you, sir? Nice to see you out there. We hey, just bud. had Mike on the show. Cool. Great, great. Uh, he, he leads his own uh, big band, and uh, he's down there in Florida. Hopefully, everything's good with you down there in Florida. Yeah, really. We said our best. 
Um, but yeah, he's a beautiful musician, and uh, he was featured, I think, a week or two ago. So yep. yeah, it's all good. All right, keeping the pace. That's right. I love bass solos. Yeah, that's how I can tell the. Again, for those of you that just joined us, Mr. Ray Brown on the bass, we got the poll winners on vinyl. You can hear the crackle. You can feel the warmth. You can warm your hands over that if you're in a cold environment, my friends. Shelly Man and the boys. Tony Matola hung with these boys. Oh, I would imagine so. Yeah. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. And on that note. Timing. Timing, for What was that? What, what, what the clown say? What was it? Oh, oh it was, you ask me. The, the shtick goes like this. You ask me what it is I do for a living. <laughs> I will answer you. And then you say, what's the most difficult thing about my job? So what do you do for a living? Stand-up comedian. What's the most difficult? <laughs> Every time. It's like a pickle on Timing. a burger. God dang it. Sauce and pickle. <laughs> oh, man. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, that ends that piece. And we thank you for listening to the music and watching us. Good luck. <laughs> putting some faces. Good night and good luck. And enjoy the music, my friends. Neon Jazz.